the Joe Rogan experience. How did you stumble upon the story of fentanyl? Because weren't you at one point in time, didn't you write about like rap music? Yeah, I have a book about N.W.A. and Tupac, and I interviewed like Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, all those people. Yeah, but I was the L.A. Weekly music editor, and I started looking into this story about why people were always dying at raves. So like, I don't know if you remember a few years back, every time there was a rave, they're like one person died, two yeah. people died, yeah. or more. And they always said it was from ecstasy. But I knew that ecstasy was really not that dangerous of a drug. You know, MDMA, pure MDMA, very few people die from that. So I was like, what is going on here? And I looked into it, and it turned out it was all adulterated. It wasn't real ecstasy. It wasn't real molly. It was adulterated with all these new drugs. And I kind of went down the rabbit hole, and I found out that all these new drugs were made in China. They were all synthetic, and there were like hundreds of them. And then it turns out that the most, you know, the worst of them was fentanyl. And that's how I got onto the topic. And fentanyl, most people think of fentanyl, they think of it as being a new thing. But it's not really a new thing, right? It was, wasn't it, it was invented in the 50s? Or yeah. Yeah, it was invented by a Belgian chemist. Um, he was trying to find something that worked better than morphine in hospitals. But doesn't morphine work really good? Well, it does, but for things like, um, yeah, traditionally, <laughs> people have gotten a lot of mileage out of morphine. But um, for things like open-heart surgery, oh. he wanted something that came on really fast, and it lasted a long time. Mm. And so he manipulated the chemical structure of morphine, came up with fentanyl. It was a blockbuster drug, you know, and still is used in hospitals all the time. Um, it's used, you know, there's the fentanyl patch for people with cancer, chronic pain. And then when you get a, like a colonoscopy, they give you fentanyl before that. And then, uh, women who have epidurals during childbirth, that I believe is usually fentanyl. So it's still an important hospital drug. And so how did it come to be that this drug from the 1950s sort of reemerges and it reemerged during the rave scene? Is that what it was? It was actually before that. It first started killing people a little bit at the beginning of the 80s. And uh, nobody knew what it was. And it was from China then as well? No. The, back then, um, it was these kind of mystery chemists. These guys who, there was this one guy in particular called George Marquardt. And he was like a, a genius maniac who read all the chemical literature he learned about fentanyl. He's like, I should try to make this. I bet it would be a hit with um, recreational users. And so he started making it, um, and it stumped authorities because these people would die. They would have track marks in their arms like it was heroin. They would have syringes, but they tested them afterwards, and there's no heroin in their system. And so they're like, what is this? And the only way they finally found out was that there was this uh, scientist testing racing horses and apparently fentanyl was being used to dope horses What? It, to like um so they would withstand more pain and would go longer and faster and could really train harder yeah and so so this guy made the connection he's like oh this is fentanyl this is this new thing and he actually predicted what was going to happen he's like we are in trouble now because not only is there fentanyl you can make a new if you ban fentanyl you can adjust the molecule, make another type of fentanyl. When they ban that, you can make another one, add infinitum, basically. Wow. So the, the thing with horses would be that they would be in pain so they wouldn't run as hard? So they would force them to run harder by dulling the pain? I guess so, yeah. I don't know all the details of it, but, you know, it's performance enhancing, basically. Doesn't it seem kind of counterintuitive? You would think that, like, an opiate would, like, make them sleepy, right? Well... I don't know all the right. details. Maybe yeah. it just has a different effect on horses. That's fair. So then the internet comes along. And through the internet, people started scouring the medical literature and scientific literature and chemical literature. And then they find fentanyl. Exactly. Yeah, because back in the old days, um, you you know, scientists would publish a paper. They're trying to find a new drug that they can patent say the drug isn't a hit, no one wants to buy it, it goes on some dusty university shelf, never is heard from again. But in the internet age, all of these papers start going online, 
And so these rogue chemists that I reference in the title of my book, they start finding particular scientists who work on the type of drugs they're interested in. And then they start going through all of their papers and they pick out drugs that uh, they think would work recreationally. And so when fentanyl first came out, it was totally legal. People, you could walk around with a giant bag of it. They couldn't do anything. And so it set in motion this sort of cat and mouse game between law enforcement and drug chemists, which really still persists to this day, although mostly in China now. Have you ever experienced any opiates personally? I've taken, yeah, like tramadol and like Tylenol 3 and stuff like that. Tylenol 3 is opiates? I think it's codeine, mm. which is a low-level opioid. And I don't know. To me, it, it always gets me stoned, but it never seems to like deal with the problem. I don't really like opioids. You know what I mean? It like I can't sleep, and it's just not my thing. It's not your thing, yeah. I uh, had the old Nyquil had codeine, didn't it? Did it? Didn't it? Did we? We've been over this, haven't we? Didn't we try to figure this out? I I remember I took Nyquil in the '90s, in the late '90s. I was sick. It was like the last time I ever took it, and uh, it was wonderful. I was lying in uh, bed going, this is amazing. I don't even give a shit if I'm yeah. tired. I'm sick. <laughs> a lot of people say that. I just it's sank like, into the bed. I was like, ah. And another time, I had a morphine drip. I had knee surgery. And they gave me a little morphine drip. And anything, every time I, I wanted, I could just hit this button uh-huh. and get a little bit more. I was just hammering that button, uh-huh. just lying in bed. <laughs> well, that's like the irony of uh, the opioids. It can produce the greatest pleasure yeah. and the greatest pain. You know, I think Sam Quinones said that, like, um, how can one molecule be give you the greatest pleasure imaginable and the worst pain imaginable? Yeah, Lenny Bruce had some crazy quote about it, something about that it was like getting hugged by God. I forget what the quote was. But um, I, I, I've never had experience with heroin, um, but I knew, I've known people that were addicts, quite a few. And a couple of them that died. And one of them that I knew, there was this guy who was a pool hustler back in my pool playing days in New York. And uh, his nickname was Water Dog. I forget his real name. I think it was Bill. <clears throat> but uh, no, that was Buffalo Bill was his other nickname. I don't remember his real name. But anyway, this guy was uh, an elite pool player, big time gambler. But the thing was, he had to do heroin first. So like they would play games for like $10,000, these huge games. And all these guys would come from the tri-state area. They would come around to watch these matches and bed on the side. And uh, Water Dog would go to the bathroom, and everybody knew what was going on. He would go and shoot up, and then he would come, and he would sit on a chair like this. Just sit there for like half an hour. Just sit there. Wow. And then, and then when it was over, when the half hour was over, he would just like, okay. And then he would go and he play. In the zone. And he couldn't miss. And he was playing this guy, um, this this dude that I knew named George, who was also a big time gambler. And he was just screaming and yelling that this motherfucker, when he's on this stuff, he can't miss. Uh-huh. He, can't, he had no nerves. Like nothing bothered him. You could scream in his face. He would look at you like an alien. Like it didn't didn't bother him at all. Like like an insect would look at you. And he had this incredible ability to play like. Uh, at, at the very best while he was fucked up on heroin. Uh-huh. And I remember thinking, what a bizarre drug. I mean, think about all the amazing artists that's claimed. Yeah, I think about jazz and John all the Coltrane. great improv. John Coltrane, yes. Yeah. Lenny Bruce. So many people. I mean, you go down the line, all these different folks. I mean, that uh, mugshot that I have out there of Hendrix. Yeah. That was heroin. Got oh, it was? Heroin okay. in Toronto. I mean, yeah, I mean, people like... People prefer heroin to fentanyl. Like I've heard it described as more soulful, people say. Mm. But the thing is you can't even get heroin in most parts of America, like pure heroin anymore. It's all cut with fentanyl. Well, you got to go straight to Afghanistan, right? Um, That's probably, (laughs) yeah, probably Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Now, can you grow poppies like can that be grown in the uh, yeah i've heard that like if you just walk around on the street like 
nice neighborhoods, you'll see poppies all the time. You just don't even know you're looking at them. And that's actually heroin. Like you could get yeah. heroin from those poppies. Yeah. It's like that's if they strange. grow net, you know, organically and you're not doing it on purpose, it's no big deal. But if you start cultivating it, that's when it becomes You just got a place to do I don't know. <laughs> oh, they're beautiful. Look how pretty. Yeah. Do you also have San Pedro cactus on your lawn, sir? Oh, those are pretty too. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah. You, um, yeah, I mean, those cactuses, I can't imagine there are a lot of trained <laughs> police who know what to look for. I feel like if you're going to grow some mezcal, you know, mescaline cacti or whatever. You're, That's the move. You're yeah. probably going to be all right. Just mix it up with regular cactus. Pretend you're a cactus enthusiast. Yeah. <laughs> just have it all over your lawn. Some succulents. Yeah, I'm just really into cactus, man. They're pretty. And yeah. they also water them. I go out of town a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when, you know, what what scares me is, you know, I mean, I just know people that party. I know people that take pills. And it seems like fentanyl is, things are getting cut with fentanyl a lot. It's mm-hmm. not, you know, it's not a, an uncommon thing for all sorts of different drugs. Like how many different drugs are cut with fentanyl, street drugs? Oh man, it is like an awful time to be a young person on the party scene. Um you know, like when I was coming up, and probably when you were coming up, they said the D.A.R.E. program and all that, say no, just say no. They made it sound like every drug could kill you, right? Right. right. Now, unfortunately, that's like almost reality that basically any pill or any powder, if you didn't get your pill from CVS, you know, your pain pill or from a pharmacy that's legit, it could be cut with fentanyl. And that's how uh, Prince died. That's how Tom Petty and the rapper Mac Miller all died, is that they were t- thought they were taking legitimate pain pills. Is that really what happened? That is really so what happened, Prince yeah. got his from the, the black market? Yeah, well, the guy who supplied Prince has been, he refuses to really say exactly where he got it. But He's still it, alive? The, the guy who got him for Prince, yeah. Where is he? I don't know, I think in Minneapolis or something. They should find yeah. that fucking guy. Well, the doctor is also... Um, like settled or something. I think the doctor might've been involved somehow. It's a mystery where he got these pills, but you know, Prince was like doing the splits on stage at age, you know, 58 or whatever. And he was definitely a guy who walked around with a lot of pain. He was a Jehovah's witness. He was not a recreational drug user as we think about it. You know, he was, he wanted pain and I'm sure for years, his handler or whatever was buying them off the dark net mm-hmm. or whatever, and, and they were fine for years. But but then a drug dealer trying to save some money, increase profits, cut it with fentanyl, and <sighs> that's, that's how he died. And I heard Tom Petty actually um, s- suffered an injury or hurt himself at one of his concerts, and he just literally walked outside and – asked like the first sketchy guy he saw if he had any pain pills and that's what killed him jesus christ oh god 